So you've probably seen one of these uh, really, really cheap uh, engraving machines uh, slash maybe CNC mills. And uh, you're probably wondering if it's worth it or not. And I was wondering this, uh, you know, probably about a year or so ago. And, uh, well, I eventually bought one and I've had it for a while now. You can see that it's used. So, uh, what do I think about it? Basically, if you want to use this machine as a laser engraver or as uh, some other kind of engraving using you know, a very tiny little <laughs> bit like this one, this machine works very well and a lot of other people have already reviewed it for that uh, purpose and it's kind of the purpose that it's uh, you know, designed for and it does that job actually really well considering how little it costs. Uh, but my interest in this machine was more about the CNC aspect of it. So that's what I'll be focusing on. And <clears throat> when we get into that area, the answer is a little bit more complicated and it really depends on what your particular needs are. So let's have a look at the accuracies that we can kind of measure with this machine. So first we'll look at repeatability. Basically, if we try to achieve the exact same measurement, how near will we actually be? And uh, so I have this dial, it's in millimeters, and one full turn is one millimeter, and each line <laughs> represents uh, one hundredth of a millimeter. So here I'm very close to it, I'm gonna move it uh, five millimeters using the uh, universal G-code platform, <laughs> and see what it ends up on. And so we can see that we're slightly above 60. I have a bit of an angle here, so I don't see it exactly the same as you. Um, but it's, it's slightly over 60 here. Uh, if we then go back and try again, we see that we end up at basically the exactly same point. So we can say that repeatability, I mean, we can, we can test it more times. It's always a good thing to test it multiple times. We can see that again we end up pretty much at the same uh, spot. So the accuracy for repeatability here, at least on this axis, and it's actually the same for all the axes because all of the axes work the same way, uh, <laughs> is less than one hundredth of a millimeter, which is you know even less in uh, freedom units. So um, let's have a look at uh, backlash. And backlash is how much we get back to the same position when we change direction. So if we now go in the other direction and then go back, we'll see how far off we are. And there, we can see that that's probably one or two uh, hundredths of a millimeter. So that's actually very, very little. Let's see if we go the other, <laughs> other direction again and we go back. And we see we get to that point. So that's, I, I, think, I think it's one one hundredth of a millimeter, and so that's pretty good. That's actually very good for this kind of machine, and it's because basically uh, on on these um, lead screws there are two nuts with a spring between, so it's kind of holding on both edges, which and that's what uh, compensates or kind of deals with that backlash, and and it's actually very very small for such a cheap machine. So the most important thing for a CNC machine is of course how much it moves or doesn't move, preferably, when there is actual load applied to it, not when it's you know just free in the air. And so we can test that by just kind of pushing on it, like this. And we can see that now there's actually quite a lot of deflection here. We can see that there's quite a lot, well, <laughs> you know, depending on how you look at it, but there's at least 15 hundredths of a millimeter uh, here that it's actually getting moved, and that's the plastic bending. That's the, basically the plastic bending <laughs> that we can see, and we can maybe push it up to 20. Whoops, I moved this, <laughs> let's put it back. Uh, that's why I have this plate. <laughs> so we can see that if, uh, if I'm holding it here, uh, we can see that basically we don't, we don't get much, we don't go about tw uh, 20. There's no, no more than 20, and <laughs> which is you know, two tenths of a, of a millimeter. And that's also pretty good, uh, considering that this is plastic. 
and basically you can push it more but of course you can always run it very uh, slowly and very safely with very very small cuts uh, at, especially uh, when you do the finishing so this is uh, you know a lot of course a lot more significant than when we're testing the the simple uh, <coughs> the simple positioning accuracy but uh, we can see that it does move a significant amount uh, when there is load applied and so that means that if you're going to use this as a CNC machine you do need to take the load into consideration and know that it can actually move it quite a lot well depending on what kind of accuracy you need now I'm measuring all the way down on the actual end mill which is of course where the actual deflection is actually important it doesn't really matter up here it <laughs> matters down here where you're actually cutting however you might notice how thin this end mill is and how far down it is. I mean, this is basically like 10 times, uh, <clears throat> the length is 10 times the uh, thickness. And that's something you really shouldn't do. I mean, if you're doing this, you're going to have problems, uh, you know, no matter what kind of machine you're working with. So this isn't actually very uh, realistic, but that's what uh, th this machine came with. Uh, newer ones, I think probably just a month after I bought mine, they changed it and put an ER collar there instead, which is much better at holding uh, the end mill uh, at a proper length. <clears throat> so you can see here that now we, we're easily going above 20, uh, maybe as much as 30 if we, if we push, push uh, hard. So we can see that when we're using the, the machine in a way that we're not supposed to, it doesn't work that well, um, and we'll, we'll we'll need to take you'll need to take that in consideration always, no matter what kind of machine you have. You have how far out you're going uh, compared to the diameter is always very very important to consider. So enough with the measurements. What can you actually do with this machine? Well, this is uh, a great example, I think, of what the machine is capable and also kind of designed for. Um, this is something that I did with the machine uh, when I got it. Uh, not the very first thing, I first did a bunch of tests obviously, but this is one of the first real things that I did with the machine. And I did it with this tiny, tiny, pointy thing. And you can see that it actually works really well. You can get very, very smooth surface finish uh, with even this very tiny thing. Uh, but it takes a long time, and obviously also digging all the way down here that also takes a very very long time so doing something with with this little thing takes a very long time but you can see this is very good i mean this is great um so it works very well also i did uh, this thing and th this i did with uh, a ballpoint uh, like this one and once i when i got one of those and uh, well you can see that it's it works if it's used right there we go <laughs> you can see it uh, it uh, does uh, work basically uh, it had a longer point here but uh, it broke because it's just so small and fragile but uh, yeah this machine could do it I did it with two passes so first like this and then I had a 3d print uh, that held it like soft jaws uh, and this way to do the other side and uh, it actually works so yeah I think you can actually do quite a lot with this machine for very little money uh, at least in wood. Aluminum, I just don't know yet. Uh, but at least with wood, you can do a whole bunch of things, and I do think uh, it's worth the price. So, how often do I actually use this machine? Well, it turns out that I almost never use the machine, uh, unfortunately. And that's because of one very big problem, and that is the size, or the lack of it. Um, especially in the z-axis. You've got about 40 millimeters here of travel uh, distance and that's actually not so bad. It actually works for quite a lot of things. The problem is that you don't have any space to put uh, something like a vise. Even this very very tiny vise actually hits this uh, end mill here. Uh, obviously the end mill is too long but still it takes up a huge amount of the space and you can't really get in anywhere even with a jaw <coughs> like that it still takes up a, a lot of the <coughs> area and you can't really work with things without 
really, really <laughs> having to figure out how to hold your piece, uh, which is kind of, can sometimes be difficult enough. Um, just even if you have a lot of room, and with very little room, you have to get super creative sometimes if you want to be able to actually do things. And that means I've actually ended up not using this machine most of the time. It just usually just kind of sits in a corner, and that's very unfortunate. Another problem is uh, that there aren't any end stops, so it doesn't know where the end is, and so you can't home it or anything. However, there are <laughs> actually uh, connectors back there that you could probably hook that up to, and I've ordered some, uh, some end stops that I'm planning on setting up in some way to see if that works, but that should probably work, so that could probably be fixed, but it doesn't come standard, not with this version anyway. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, it's very useful to have those end stops. The last uh, thing that is also not so good with this machine is that it spews dust everywhere. Now, of course, that isn't actually the machine's fault. Obviously, when you <laughs> when you're milling wood like this, you will get uh, a lot of dust. Uh, but that is also something that you really need to consider. They will get dust everywhere. You can see I've only I cleaned it up a bit, uh, but there's still dust everywhere and when you actually use the machine you get so much dust so much everywhere and so <laughs> uh, you really need to consider how you're supposed to take care of that and if you kind of set up some kind of vacuum or <laughs> something you know it's it is a big hassle um, and also this machine it does feel kind of uh, well dangerous you can probably see here that it's actually cracked. Turn, turn it around like this. You can see that it actually has a, a big crack here, and it actually not it's not holding the motor anyway. And so that's also a reason why I can't use it anymore. You can see it just cracked here, and this whole, which means this whole piece needs to be 3D printed again, obviously, um, or you need to come up with some other way of of kind of tying it uh, there. And so that's another reason why it also hasn't been been used. And so it's not all. Uh, great with this kind of machine, but it was very cheap, and I do think it's it's worth it. But still, there are things that you need to take care of in order to be able to use this machine properly, and so it's uh, it, that needs to be considered uh, before you buy one of these. All right, so I hope that was interesting for you. Um, <coughs> this kind of review has probably been done by lots of people already. I'm not the first, but. Uh, this was my first ever video, so I'm trying, just kind of trying to figure out how any of and all of this works. And uh, well, they don't let me know if uh, this is something that maybe I should keep doing, uh, or if I just should give up right away. 